Hey guys, welcome to another video of your favorite cloud learning platform, K21 Academy, where you learn cloud from the experts. In this video, our expert trainer will be covering performing real-time analytics with stream analytics. We have taken this clip from our step-by-step -step learning program on data engineering on Microsoft Azure DP203. Guys, make sure you watch the entire video so you can avail the free gift at the very end. Now let's hear from an expert. Hey guys, how are you? Welcome to model number six. In model number six, we'll talk about stream analytics and we'll perform real time analytics with stream analytics service. So we have three lessons over here, data stream and event processing, data ingestion and processing data with stream analytics job. So let's get started. So as part of lesson number one, we'll first differentiate between data stream and event processing and we'll understand which technology does the processing for us. So first thing is what is data stream? So imagine there is a car on the highway and there are sensors in the car and data is getting streamed from that particular sensor into cloud endpoint where you are processing the data. So that, that is called as data stream. So in context of analytics, data stream, streams are event generated by sensors or other sources that can be analyzed by another technology. Data stream processing approach can be, uh, you can say we have two approaches as such. When the data is coming from the car, you can either store it in any storage location and then in batch mode, you can process it out. Or maybe you can analyze the data in real time. When as soon as data is coming, you are running some query on the data in real time and uh, you are getting continuous outputs like that. So why do we do data stream? to analyze data, to understand the system better, and to have some trigger actions on top of it. So if the data is coming from the car, one of the trigger action which comes to mind is that if the tire is going to burst, you can, you can basically send SMS, maybe push notification, or maybe in the dashboard in the car, you can trigger one alert saying the tire is in critical condition and please slow down or change the tire or so and so forth, any other situation might be there. So various type of use cases can be there against data streams and stream analytics. So what is event processing? The process of consuming data stream, analyzing them, deriving actionable insights out, out of all of them is called as event processing. So the entire process is basically event processing and it is having three distinct components will be there. Someone will produce the event, someone will consume the event, someone will process the event. So event processes are there. Example includes sensor or processing. Example includes sensors or processes that generate data continuously, such as heart rate monitor or a heart rate, uh, sorry, highway uh, toll lane sensor. Event processor and engine to consume event data stream and deriving insights from them. Depending on the problem space, event processors either process one incoming event at a time, such as maybe heart rate monitor, or process multiple events coming at a time from highway toll. Uh, booth sensor might be there from there all the data is coming and you're processing in real time. So event consumers and application which consume the data and take specific action based on that insight. Example of event consumer includes alert generation dashboard or even sending data to another event processing engine. Now when we talk about various components over there, you can have sources, sensor system application can be the source which is producing the data. Ingestion can be done by Event Hub, IoT Hub, or Azure Blob Storage. Analytical Engine, Stream Analytics Query Language can be used, or .NET SDK can be there, which is doing the processing right now. Destination can be Azure Data Lake, Cosmos DB, SQL Database, Blob Storage, Power BI. So when we process that event, there is one service in Azure called as Stream Analytic Service. In the lab, I'll show it to you. It will make more sense if I show it to you. And it basically uh, what it does when the data is coming as stream, it run queries on it on and we call that window that we are running the query on window as such. What is the meaning of window? Window can be one minute window, window can be five second window, window can be one second window. Smaller the window, faster output comes. So when the data is coming as stream, we are running query on one second of data. That means one second of window or five second of window or maybe five minutes of window that depends on how how or what type of, how much time do we have at hand? When do we have to put the output back? So the service is called a stream analytics service. And uh, basically a couple of things are there, like input, output, and queries which are running over there. 
we'll come to it before going over there let's have a quick um, review question which of the following technology typically provide an ingestion point of data stream in an event processing solution that use static source as data so data is being static right now so it's not coming you can say uh, as real time uh, as such so azure blob storage is the location which uh, can use which can be used as a static source of data and someone can read the data from there and process it in batch mode in lesson number 2 we'll talk about data ingestion with azure event hub so in this lesson we will describe azure event hub we'll create an event hub uh, as such we will evaluate the performance of an event hub and we'll talk about how do we configure applications to talk to event hub now azure event hub is built on apache kafka apache kafka is a very popular open source publisher subscriber model and event hub is a service which is built on top of it now event hub is a highly scalable publisher subscriber service that can ingest millions of events coming per second and stream those these millions of events into multiple application and those applications will be the event processors or the consumers who will consume the events and then further process it out in the lab to create event hub we are going to do two steps first is we will create the namespace namespace is basically like a wrapper and inside the wrapper we will have the instance of event hub which is the real thing which really takes the which is the publisher subscriber which takes the hit and uh, then trans you can say forwards the streams into multiple application so can i have more than one instance of event hub inside the namespace answer is yes that's the purpose of it so inside the wrapper call is namespace you can have multiple event hub which are doing which are ingesting millions of events per second that is totally possible in the lab section we will literally create it right we can configure any application to talk to event hub by using the connection string of event hub there is we'll, in the lab we'll go we'll copy the connection string we'll go to the simulator uh, which will be running in our laptop and in the configuration file of the simulator we'll give the connection string and when we will run it it will start posting data to the event hub now we can evaluate the performance of event hub and this particular functionality is embedded inside the service so we can check out whether event hub is active right now it is healthy how many messages are there and uh, how much data is being retained as such so if you see the data retention is going up it means that the consumers are not consuming the data in this point in time and there is no data loss so even if any consumer fails to consume the data it the data is not lost it's basically stored in event hub so all that information is available in the performance metric over there and the dashboard looks like something which you have in the screen right now okay check out couple of questions the application that publish message to event hub very frequently will get the best performance by using advanced message queuing protocol because it establish a persistent socket the answer is yes we have not talked about this but this is fyi by default how many partitions will be there in event hub answer is default to in the lab when you create it you can have a look at it if an event hub goes offline before a consumer can process that event does the data is is the data lost answer is no data is not lost now coming to lesson number 3 in this lesson number 3 we'll talk about azure stream analytics job which is the service event processing service which where we run the queries and these query process our data so in this lesson we'll talk about stream analytics workflow uh, we'll create stream analytics job we'll configure stream analytics job input output write a transformation query and we'll start the job we'll see how does it start and then we'll go to the lab and we'll practically do it now azure stream analytics is the service which does the processing of event and there are multiple parts over there there is input output and the cep is there complex event processing system where we run the queries so input might can be static or can be real time so real time will be event hub and static will be storage account so from from both the location it can read the data then we can we run tsql queries on the data and you have to define a windowing function whether you want to run the query on 1 minute of data or maybe 5 second of data or 1 second of data and so on and so forth and whatever outputs are coming what do you want to do that do you want to stream it out do you want to store it do you want to push it into power bi report and so we can also stream data directly into the visualization dashboard so all these are part of the workflow of event processing with stream analytics so input query output three parts are there as part of the workflow 
so when we create streamatic service this is we have to provide the job name subscription resource group and location where where will it, it be running and we have to provide the streaming unit streaming unit means how many mb of data are we processing in one second so once the stream analytics is created we create the input over there so input is the job input from where the data is coming in so data might be coming from event hub iot hub or maybe from azure storage blob which is static location so you have to specify the name subscription namespace of event hub which event hub do we want to use they might be more than one uh, any policy by which you want to read and what formats are there and, and basically what policy uh, keys are there all these things are configured and this makes the input of the job similar to job input we also have to specify where are we putting the output so job outputs can be event hub sql database blob storage table storage service bus topic service bus queue cosmos db power bi data lake generation one data lake generation two so where where are we putting the output after we run the query as such so job output need to be configured once the input and output is configured we have to specify the query so data which is coming from the input then the query runs and data goes to the output adapter into the output location so as part of the transformation query this is where we define it and we can then once it is created we save it and then we run there is a start option on the top once the query is saved we start the html text job and the job is continuously running till you stop it so continuously data might be coming from the input adapter and query is running and data will be going through the output adapter into the output location so now coming over to the review questions which job input consume data stream from application at low latency and high throughput answer is event hub streaming stream analytics query use which query language answer is transact sql you are a data engineer for contour so you want to see the various kpi matrices what can you use you can use the dashboard to do this we have dashboard available you can also create your own dashboard as such we have put on everything about the certification and a lot more on this 12 week roadmap that we have created for you if you are preparing for Microsoft Azure Data Engineer Certification DP203. On week number one, we start with explore, compute and storage options for data engineering workloads. Then on week two, we cover run interactive queries using Azure Synapse Analytics serverless SQL pools. On week number three, we cover data exploration and transformation in Azure Databricks. On week number four, we cover explore, transform, and load data into data warehouse using Apache Spark. On week number five, we cover ingest and load data into data warehouse. On week number six, we cover transform data with Azure Data Factory or Azure Synapse Pipelines. On week number seven, we cover orchestrate data movement and transformation in Azure Synapse Pipelines. On week number eight, we cover end-to-end -end security with Azure Synapse Analytics. On week number nine, we cover support hybrid transactional analytical processing with Azure Synapse Link. On week number 10, we cover real-time stream processing with Stream Analytics. On week number 11, we cover create a stream processing solution with Event Hubs and Azure Databricks. By week 11, we are pretty confident that you are ready for the certification exam. So to top it all off, on week number 12, we help you with some tips and resources for clearing certification and CV preparation along with some exam questions and interview questions. Guys, this is an excellent training program that we have created specially to meet your needs as you are preparing for the certification exam. If you are interested in this training program, then I would highly recommend you to go and attend our free class on Microsoft Azure Data Engineer Certification. In this free class, we will be covering what is Azure Data Engineer role and exam DP203, why everyone is working on data currently, important Azure services you should learn, and there is going to be a live demo as well on Azure Synapse Analytics components. To register for this free class, go at k21academy.com slash Azure DE02, then select an event date, your name, your email ID, your phone number, and then click on yes save my seat once you click on this button you will be redirected to this particular page that means you have successfully registered for this free class now guys i'll see you guys directly at the free class